Welcome into to the first episode of season four of the Masoni and Peacock podcast. John Masoni, unfortunately, not able to be here tonight. I'm Josh Grant, the play-by-play announcer for Venice Indian football. Can't wait to see John next uh, on Friday in a couple days from now. But I'm sitting here along a guy who needs no introduction, head coach of your defending state champion, Venice Indians, John Peacock. Coach, we already did the coaches show, but it's just great to welcome you back in once again here from Bogies, our new home for the Peacock podcast and coaches show. I'm not Masoni, no. I, I walked in and just got a lot better, better looking. Well, he definitely did get a lot better looking because he's not here for you to see, but I sat in, and uh, so I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad. I, thanks for letting me sit in tonight. Um, and uh, it's another great start of the start of the season. We got a couple nights before opening night. What's what's the feeling like now? What are you going through at this point in practice? And is the anticip- anticipation getting really fired up now? Or are you still kind of on a calm, like a relaxed mode? Well, I think the kids are starting to get excited. I think, um, you know, the coaches are, you know, st- you know, starting to, you know, get a little antsy. I think that, uh, you know, when you – obviously when you play an opponent like IMG, it's a different week. And, you know, I've been doing this for a long time, and and I don't want to – I'm not going to mention, like, any teams, like, if we're preparing for, but it's a little different when you're playing a team like IMG, you know, compared to a team where you know you're going to go out there and beat them – no matter what, no matter how bad you play, no matter how good you play, um, so it, it it does it does make you prepare harder. It does uh, make you look at uh, more details because um, you know they're going to play fast, they're extremely fast, and they're going to be a very, a very very good football team. So you got to really, unless you want to go out there and get embarrassed, I mean, you really got to try to do everything as good as you possibly can. So a lot of high expectations out there coming off the. The state championship game, you're going to see a lot of merch out there. The team did a great job selling the merchandise, helped pay for the rings. What a beautiful ring it is. Um, What can the fans out there expect from the Indians this season? That's a good question. Um, I mean, the only thing I can guarantee you is that we're going to play pretty pretty good on defense. You know, we're going to have a a very, very stout defensive line. Uh, You're probably going to see – the best player in the country every Friday night in Damon Wilson, um, who I could sit here and talk about all night. Um, and, and the reason I say that is just because, you know, what a, one, what a great person he is, and, and two, uh, how he's done everything right. And, um, you know, I was speaking to his dad the other night, and he said, you know, you know, Damon went in his room and watched IMG film for two hours and, you know, how the offensive lineman's going to block. And, uh, you know, so – a guy that's putting that much time and effort in it when he really doesn't need to. I mean, the guy bench presses 440 pounds. He's extremely fast. He's tall. His arms are long. I mean, he's got everything you could possibly want. Including offers from every big school in the, in the, in can, the nation. Yeah, he can go wherever he wants. And, um, but he's still, you know, he could care less about, you know, taking trips or what schools recruit him. But he just wants to, you know, his focus right now is how good of a player can I be Friday night? And I think that that says a lot. And that's very similar to um, how Trey Burton was. You know, Trey Burton was, you know, got an offer from Florida uh, before he ever took a snap his junior year, and he committed as well. Um, but his main focus was Venice High School football, and that's the way it should be. you got to live in your shoes, I mean, no matter where you're at. You know, so what, what is it going to be when you're, you know, People that don't live in their shoes and you go on, on to, off to college, then what are, you, what are they worried about then? The NFL. Right. You know what I mean? And when you get to the NFL, what are you worried about then? Like, or where's my next contract? You know what I mean? you got to live in your shoes, and, and that's what he's doing. And um, he's been a great teammate, and uh, he's been a great example to, to everyone of, of how to practice, how to work hard, how to, you know, work in the weight room, um, you know, on time, and just everything right. You know, so um, that's one thing that you'll get to see. Uh, at Venice games, and I think, you know, it's not every Friday night where you get to li- go to go to watch a high school football game and see the best player in the country line up. And uh, he, he's all real. I mean, he's real. And oh, I, I've I've shown pictures and film to friends of mine around the country, and they, they this kid's a freak of nature, bit fastest you know kid for his size they've ever seen. And I mean, he's he's got a lot of tape on him right now. What does obviously you know we know about Damon, but what can he do for those other guys? What can he do for? Colin Adkins and Trenton can tie right up the middle. He's going to see a lot of double teams, I can assume. What is, what is he going to do to help free up those guys to help pad their numbers? Well, well like you said, I mean, obviously, you're going to have to – they're going to have – teams are going to have to prepare for Damon. Um, you know, I don't, I don't 
I don't know how how they will. Like right now, it might be a little easier, but when Trenton's back, like I'm not sure. I'm not sure they will be able to because Trent's a dang good football player as well. So and and he's right in the middle. So if you're not if you're not taking care of him, then you're you're in it for a real, real all night then. Right. And then and Colin Atkins is no no slouch either. I mean Colin had a has had a great career for us so far, and we're expecting big things from him. Um, smart football player, and um, I mean he 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 can play as well. So we're excited about all three of those guys uh, coming back, and it's you know we expect to have one of the best defensive lines we ever had. And alongside, you know, Damon, who's getting a lot, all the press. Alongside him is is another one of the considered one of the top fifty players in the country is Elliot Washington. Yeah, I mean, and and, the, and you know, I can say the same thing about Elliot. I mean, just a great person. Um, you know, does the right thing. Uh, you know, he's, he's worked extremely hard. He's put himself in this position, and uh, I mean, he look at him and you and uh, he's a cornerback, and he looks like a. A linebacker. Yeah, you know? I mean he is. He's put together and he's strong. He's. I think he's got the. Um, we just did a, did a. I did a new thing this year. All time lift board and um, he is on it. He's on it for clean, I believe, and I think Sage. And we did it by position. So, um, and I just did clean and bench because I think squat. You know, you, you have some people that you know do a quarter squat and call it a squat. You know, so I think that's kind of judgmental. But I mean, you either bench press it or you don't. I mean. So and you either clean it or you don't. Right. Um, so I think uh, Elliott has had a 290 clean. So he's he's got the all-time defensive back record, and then Sage has the bench at 335. You know. So, so El- Elliott, I mean, speed and, and power. I mean, also oh, wasn't he the 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 lay, the captain of the four by 100 team that broke Venice records this past season? Yeah, spring track? I mean, he he is a he's a freak athlete, and and actually just today um, he returned a punt and he accelerated and it's it's uh it's exciting to see i mean because his speed and size like he he is a really really impressive athlete so as you know towards the end of last season or i'm excuse me in the springtime saw a lot of college coaches come to the island of venice nick saban Dabo sweeney kirby smart all within two days among a myriad of others in that process do you think did you learn anything from those guys, or and and do you think what did that do for, for the guys on the team that had a chance to? They didn't get a chance to really meet them, but to see that type of publicity and that type of celebrity coming out to watch the, some of their teammates. Well, I think I think one thing it does. Because I thought it was really it, cool. It shows them it's obtainable, you know. Because a lot of that's a goal of a lot of them, um, and we have some really good young players. You know, we have uh, like we talked about in the um, the coaches show. You know. Uh, Shari Charles, who could be right up there as well as a, as a five-star guy, and and uh, Jamaris, aka Gator, um, at running back, he is he is impressive, and and he could be one of the top running backs in the country in his class, and um, and and with that being said, and I know we we're going to talk about the offensive line in a second, but you know, Gator's a, a sophomore, and um, we currently have 14 offensive linemen on our roster, and there's not one senior. And, uh, wow. So, so being a running back and knowing that and looking in front of you and saying, wow, we're getting better, we're getting better, we're going to be able to do some things, and then know that every single one of those has another full year in the weight room and all that other stuff to gel, like how, how good um, can the future look as far as the run game? So we'll talk about that offensive line. Lost four or five starters. The only returner is Matthew Peevely, who's – Loss in that Cardinal Gibbons game was a it was a big one trying to get that running game going. You had spring, you had a different offensive line than you do now. What were those changes like, and um, how does how does it look now? Well, in this in the spring, we talked about this morning. um, We we we're going to have four new starters on the offense line. The only guy that um, is will be playing the same position as Matthew Peevely. Um, You know, so we had a bunch of guys that were out. Uh, you know, Finn, Finn couldn't play because he transferred from uh, Cardinal Mooney. Um, you know, so there was uh, – and Matulovic couldn't play as well. Um, you know, so we had, a, we had a bunch of starters out um, in the spring, the spring game. And, and we had uh, – we lost Gator the first series. And we didn't even have a – we had a, a Chad Fleming who was uh, – who's now a defensive back. Uh, take the rest of the reps at running back. So we kind of had a lot stacked against us in the spring. It wasn't, it wasn't, um, 
it wasn't the easiest game to coach. Those guys really gelled, and a lot of that came under the tutelage of Coach Josh Hunter and Butler. Talk about their influence on these guys. Yeah, the, uh, Coach Hunter and Coach Butler, I mean, I, I can't say enough about them. They, they, uh, they get those guys going, and, and I, I, think, I, I think if you know football, and especially if you know high school football, the, the importance of an offensive line and a defensive line will make or break you. I don't care how many athletes you have. I don't care what you have at receiver and, and what you have at running back and what you have at defensive back. If you don't have a defensive line and you don't have an offensive line, you're going to run into a team that does, and it's lights out. Right. There's nothing you can do. Was that last year from left to right tackle, would you consider that one of the best offensive lines you've ever had? Yes, no doubt. Not the most skilled. Not, not the most skilled, but the, the best offense line. I think there's a couple things that, that made them great. Um, one was the cohesiveness they had, uh, the, the bonds that they had. Heard a lot about those 7-Eleven trips. They yeah. love going to 7-Eleven, get the taquitos. They were there what, almost every day. Yeah, they, they had a great bond. Um, they, they hung out. They loved each other. Um, and now there was definitely a lot of drama involved in all that. I mean, yeah, you, there you, always you, is. You know, but but they, they truly did <laughs> really, really like each other and like being around each other. And they had an awful lot of experience. I mean, an awful lot of experience. Now, as far as the, the skill goes, I mean, I, I think this year we're, we're, we're definitely bigger, bigger up front. Um, we're probably stronger up front as well. Um, you know, we took we took some guys uh, like Riley Cleary that had, you know, was a defensive end the year before, and we moved. Who looked him. like a corner, like a tall corner. Yeah. He had, it gained a lot of weight. Yeah, paid the price in the weight room, ended up earning a Division One scholarship, full ride, and and you know he's one of the guys at the end of the year like wow he's he might be our best offensive lineman the way he came off the ball, um, so things like that that progressed last year, which which I feel like will happen again this year because that's what happens when you have good coaches. Um, we also had a guy last year, um, an MG, um, Mahat Gay, who he had never played football before in his life. He didn't understand. You know, he was after he was af asking after practice. You know, coach, why why are there some plays where I come off the ball and attack? And you know, he didn't know the proper terminology. And why are there some plays I back up? You know, he didn't understand right what the difference was and. Uh, this is a big man, 6'5", 330. We well, when, three. he was, he, when he was with us, he was six. He's probably 6'5", 6'6", uh, 265, 270. Like, like, looked like a big basketball player. Right. Now, when he left the school, I think he's like 315 right now. I remember as, as you watch the season progress, he got stronger and yeah. he got bigger. Yeah. And, and usually you see guys go the other way. You see yeah. with the, you know, the Florida heat and the constant stuff well, working out. It, you, they lose weight, but he got bigger. Well, you got to understand, he's from Senegal, and he's over here for one reason, is to get a scholarship, which he thought was going to be in basketball, um, to go to school. And it turned out it was football. Um, he got a full ride to Louisville. So, but, but he didn't, he, you know, Mahut didn't make the starting lineup, so I want to say it's like week seven. Um, maybe, maybe it was a little earlier, maybe week six. But once he started understanding everything and, and getting the concept of it, like he was a very, very good athlete, yeah. um, you know, could really move real, real well and had long arms. And um, he really picked it up nicely and he became a great player. But to start the season last year, he was over there as a defensive end, not knowing what to do. Right. You know I mean? So there is a lot of growth that happens throughout the year. And I, and I mentioned the 14 linemen is because we've, we've never had that many linemen on the roster. Usually we have – 11 we have five starters we have five scout team guys and we have one guy that can come in and play most positions we have the six man kind of um, this year we have i think you know they're all they all do some good things um and there wasn't any there wasn't like an eye popper like oh he's the clear starter um other than peebley um so they've they've all had to work well matt la cicero at center um he might be the one of the best centers we've ever had. I mean, he's and he's just a sophomore. And I say that because hopefully he keeps progressing, which I believe he will. Uh, so we, we do have some really good parts, um, and and it will come together. It might not 
it might not look pretty at some times, but I think by the end of the year, when we hit the playoffs, we'll be we'll be rocking and rolling. Well, they're the big uglies. Not supposed to look pretty. They're right. supposed to That's right. hit hard and keep moving forward. And uh, as we keep moving forward on this um, Sony and Peacock podcast live here from Bogies, the uh, Bogies address. If you haven't been to Bogies, you really haven't been to Venice. Six fifty two East Venice Ave. You can catch each and every game here on Friday nights and the Thursday, September fifteenth game also on ESPN two. They'll be showing it live here. Lots of great specials. Let's segue a little bit into. We talked about the offensive line. we got three guys who are Venice alum in the NFL. We'll start with uh, Forrest Lamp, who is uh, now with the New Orleans Saints. Yeah, Forrest, uh, we get the pleasure of Forrest comes back, and he trains in our weight room every offseason. He's been doing it um, ever since he's been in the NFL. And that's, you know, he's spent time with our players, um, you, know, you know, with our linemen, teaching them techniques. And I think that's great, you know. And that, that – as a coach, you know, and, and you're a third round draft pick, like you could go work out with wherever you want to work out and right. you could go pay whatever trainer you want. I think that just says a lot about like, you know, Forrest is a, a is a blue collar guy and, you know, he's going back to where it started and he comes in and gets to work. And you know, Forrest was, you know, clearly reminds me a lot of Forrest. You know, Forrest was um, 217 pounds at the end of his junior year. Wow. And you know his goal was to get a Division One scholarship, and we sat down and we talked, and I said, "Well, Forrest, I mean, to, to be honest, like you're way, way underweight, like to to be a defensive, to be a a Division One player, and I and I don't think it's going to be as a defensive lineman. I think it's going to be an offensive lineman. And you know, we put together a program, like I said, whatever you're eating now, just add four or five peanut butter and jellies to your regiment. And I watched Riley Clear do that. He would literally take four or five peanut butter jellies and make one sandwich out That's, of it. I, I mean, it I, would yeah. be this big. This kid would just be throwing peanut butter and jellies down. So, I mean, it was literally for 12 months in a row, every time I saw Forrest, he, he literally had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich <laughs> in his hand. Like, every time he, I saw him. Like, and he looked miserable eating them. He looked like he absolutely hated them. <laughs> but, and, and I told him, I said, you know, it's this eating, like, some people enjoy it, but you, it's – it's just as important as working hard in the weight room. Like, if you don't do it, it's not going to happen. And so I don't, I'm not really interested if you like the taste of it or you want to eat it. It's you got to eat You're it. You're going to eat it. Yeah. Period. So he, he ended up, he was, like I said, I saw, every time I saw him, he had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich in his hand. And he, um, he was 265 uh, when he graduated and went wow. to um, Western Kentucky started uh, 48 consecutive games and I think at at left tackle and never gave up a sack or something silly. Wow. You know, played Alabama and, you know, gets the best defensive end and never gave up a sack. It was just, you know, he was, he's, a, he's a tough, tough kid. Um, and it's just it, one of those things when he comes home, it's, just, it's really cool. Um, Javon is at uh, the Bengals. Undrafted free agent Javon Hiley, right here. If you don't yeah. see Javon Hiley, coach is shared the silhouette. This is Javon's silhouette. <clears throat> you can see. Um, and we'll talk more about that. Is talk, talk to Javon. Uh, probably five, five or six days ago, wasn't you know didn't ha didn't feel like he had the most opportunities in their game. Um, I think he said he had one catch and it was called back from a holding call. And uh, but then just yesterday, uh, I guess a beat writer. Uh, tweeted about what a great practice he had and um, some unbelievable catches he made that made the whole offense come and celebrate the end zone with him. So um, he, he's a player. And, and like, like I've always said, like Javon, um, he's not going to blow you away with his 40 time. He's not going to blow you away with uh, any, any uh, bench press or agility drill. But the guy – is an absolute stud. I mean, he used to tell people when they recruited him, like, yeah, he's not, he's not a 4'3 guy. He's not a 6'5 guy. I said, but I promise you, you can literally put a DB inside of his jersey and he's going to catch it. He's going to catch the ball. And um, that's what he did in college. He was one of the, you know, most productive wide receivers in college football. I think he was, like, number one, two, or three, like the top three in production his junior or uh, sorry his sophomore and junior year because this would have been his senior year um so he's just a, he's just a ball player and, and he 
his senior year was my first year at Venice High, and just I didn't really get a lot of interaction with him, but just from what I've seen and the moments that I've seen him, what a character quality kid. Oh, awesome, awesome. I I always share the same story with our players that you know, so we're in this we're in a world right now of Twitter and look at look at me, look what I've done, look at my offers, look at this, and um, you know we're you know Javon was the most successful or most productive wide receiver in the state of Florida history at any level in high school. He had more yards, more catches, more touchdowns than any receiver ever, ever. I mean, right. we've, they've been playing football a long, long time in Florida, and they've had some really, really good players. And we're in a state championship game, and they're, they're, um, they're doubling them, and, and um, you know, I'm trying to get them a, a touchdown, and it would it looked more like, a, like a, a, uh, they're doubling a gunner on the punt team when we got down inside the red zone mm-hmm. on Javon. And uh, he's like, Coach, stop. Like, I don't need a touchdown. Just run the ball. They're just giving it to us. You know, so that's the quality kid he is. Like, he's so, so unselfish and all about the team. And he, he could absolutely care less about anything other than winning. And the difference, a big difference on the field that day, other, other than talent, because the Indians blew the doors off of Bartram Trail that day. But watching the character of those guys go about their business, like you just said with Javon. I remember as I was filming on the field, uh, you, we were up big, and one of their receivers made, made a big catch. And I think they are down by, like, four scores at this point. And he gets up and he spikes the ball and starts yelling, you can't guard me, you can't guard me. Do you ever – Javon Hiley never. And, and, and you don't see that a whole lot from any Venice Indian football players. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I hope not. No. <laughs> I mean, our, I, I try – but like I said, Josh, I mean, these kids are – they're in a world where everything is instant and it's, hey, look at me um, – and, and, and listen, I get it. It's part of the, they think that's part of the game, and they think that you know posting their their highlights are, are going to get them an offer or, or whatever it may be. Um, and not, not a whole lot of people know how the recruiting game works. But I mean, the, the bottom line is recruiting a high school uh, recruiting a high school player to go to college. You're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars. Absolutely. And you're talking about a coach that's getting paid. Uh, you know, the head coach in some cases getting paid millions of dollars and your assistant coach is making um you know 300 to a million dollars you know in big time programs and and to think that that they're actually finding the guy and i found this kid on twitter and right. that's not how it works no um so and with nil deals it's even more money now involved <laughs> true. yeah true so i it's it's hard to and then you got the seven on sevens, and, and it's just you know to to get a team concept. You know, one of the things we do is we just work the heck out of them for one, to where it, it's if you're putting in that much work, it's got to mean something more than than just oh I got my catches today. And I try to explain to the you know I talked to the offense uh, last week about listen if if your mind is set on like oh I you know. It's all right to have individual goals like, oh, I want to rush for a thousand yards. That's great, but your main goal is to be the best player you can for your teammates and your team. Win, lose, or draw. And if you're happy after getting out, going out in the field and losing the game because you got yours or you got your yards, that you're not you're not a Venice guy. You you don't need to be with us. And if uh, you know, and if you're a guy that when we have a a great win for our program that you're upset because you didn't get yours, you're not our guy. Just plain right. and simple, you're not our guy. Like, we, I'm, I, I, I just can't – it makes me sick to my stomach sometimes just to – you know who else was like Javon is Amari Hayes? Unbelievable. Unbelievable the competitor could care less, could care less about the ball. I asked him, you know, I said, Amari, what, what number do you want? Yeah, I don't care, Coach. Whatever number you want. And I, when I was trying to, when I, when I first met him, I'm trying to figure out like what his goals were. And I said, Well, Mario, perfect game because he played. He, when he, before he came to us, he was playing quarterback, wide receiver, return punts, play some running back. I mean, they just he was all over the place. I said, well, just Tell me, perfect game, Mario. Like, do you see yourself like having you know five or six catches, five or six carries? You know, what do you? Just tell me what you think your goals are. He said, he said Coach, I, I, I don't care. I just want to win. I, I came here to win. And he probably felt a lot of relief 
coming to a program where he didn't have to be that guy. He didn't have to be. Well, he did. Well, he did, but <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. Like it, what, he didn't have all that pressure on him because he was surrounded by so many other weapons. Yeah, but I mean, but his you, you can just feel it when when uh, people are, and I try to tell them all the time, if you focus on being a great teammate, being the best player you can be for your team, and we have a team success, your overall success is going to be so much greater. So much greater. Can you imagine, let's just say. We need to put that on a T-shirt. All those kids watching out there, that should go on yeah. a T-shirt. So can you just imagine, like, let's just say last year, we, at, at, after 10 games, we went to the playoffs, and who did we have first round? Plant, Plant City. City. And let's just say Plant City knocked us out. Knocked us out, and it was over. So Venice was 9-2 nine and, nine and two on the year. Um, so what happens? Does MG get a scholarship to Louisville? I don't think so. I don't think he does because he got, he got four other opportunities to put his best product on the field. Does, do we have eight All-State players? No. No. You know what I mean? Like, so they got to understand, you know, and, and how many, look how many, like, does Riley Cleary get a scholarship? I don't know. Does he? Because he had his four best games for the last four of the year and really showed how he progressed. A lot of guys are in that time, like you said, in the playoffs. Outscored yeah. teams 46-8. to eight. Yeah. I mean, it was a record-setting defense and offense all season, but that playoffs is really when guys stepped up and really when you saw guys yeah, get the, what they needed. And the, the, uh, the defensive points are very, very misleading because most of those were against the backups. Right. A lot of garbage time. Yeah. Uh, four of the games were seven points. The only one was uh, 14 points, and that was Riverview. So and that was all second half with the with the backups. Coach, and then as I put together the the state championship highlight video, Coach Shannon came up to me after the award ceremony and kind of needled me and said, "Did you really have to put that touchdown in there?" <laughs> but uh, just a, uh, an outstanding effort all all season long by the, uh, both sides of the ball. We've already talked about it. we've we've waxed fantastic about it. But let's talk about the third guy. Another unselfish guy, guy that um, has a lot of positive press on him right now in, in Seattle is Jared Hewitt. Yeah, Jared Hewitt um, was a great player for us. And he is, he's, he's actually, I want to say he, he, was, he was on the practice squad last year. I think he dressed one time. I think practice squad players are making like 188. And I mean, still pretty good. Oh, no, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, three days of work, right? Right, right. Working three Sweet day week for the game. Yeah. If they don't want to. Sit There's on not the too many three day week jobs. You're making 188 thousand dollars, and I think from everything that I've read and how how Jared's talked to me, like he's on there because he's a great teammate. He's a and he is he is a great effort guy. He plays with an unbelievable motor. And um, if he keeps doing that, like, something's going to happen. Like, he's going to get that big break. He will get that big break. Um, but he just absolutely loves it. He loves football. Um, he, and and you, weren't, you weren't here when he played. No. But he, is, he was a domi as dominant as you could be as a defensive tackle. Um, extremely, extremely fast off the ball. Um, was another one. He, he was a 400-pound bencher. We've only had, like, five or six 400-pound benchers since I've been coaching since 1999. And we have we – have, uh, You got three right now, right? Th three going to be four right now. And Peevely, Wilson. Kentai. Kentai. Atkins. Atkins. Yeah. Wow. So six total and you got four right now. Yeah. So – but he was a guy that was extreme, extremely strong. But um, great teammate, you know, hustled, hustled his butts off. And, you know, it's funny because you see the growth of these kids. His, his fresh – his summer going into a sophomore year, we're running 110s, and he fell out. I said, Jared, you, you got to get up off the ground. You got to get up and finish. Right. I can't, Coach. I said, Jared, if you, if you don't get off the ground, I'm, I'm going to have to call 911. Coach, call him. You need to call him. <laughs> I, said, I said, Jared, do you really want me to call 911? Yes, call him, Coach. Call him right now. You know, so, you know, <laughs> it's just uh, – it's, it's great to see the progress. Now, the time Jerry was a senior, he, he could run them backwards. You know what I mean? Right. And I tell our kids that – I actually talked about it this year to them, like, because we had some kids that were struggling that were young. Um, and I said, listen, we're going to look back at this and we're going to laugh at this. 
We're gonna, me and you are gonna sit here and we're gonna laugh about how how you're feeling right now because by the time you're a junior and senior, you're gonna cruise to this and it's not gonna be a big deal. You know, so it's great to see kids grow like that. That's awesome, and I bet you they're all jealous now with a check mark because they got whether well, Russell Athletic and then Adidas came along and now the Indians will be wrapped in not only Nike but Air Jordan equipment this season. Th that. That brand makes such a statement every time your team walks out of the field. You want to look the sharpest, and Nike and, and Jordan uh, bring that to the field every single time. Yeah, like I said, I'm going to love wearing Jordans out uh, on the game night. There's, gonna, there's very few coaches who are going to rock Jordans on the sidelines, and that Indian coaching staff will have them on. Yeah, we're excited about it. And you guys got what? What was the, bre what was the style shoe? I think, they're, uh, I think they're Jordan 1 Lowe's. Well, they're called Green Toes. Okay. Green Toes. And, and each, each of the coaches have those green-toed shoes. Yeah, we all have them. So we've yeah. got the new whites, which if you look at the mock-ups, the new whites, the blacks, and I can't wait to see the green. What, what are we wearing Friday night? I think we're going green bottom and uh, black top. because our So greens blackout, are game one, show IMG. We don't have any choice because we, we don't have our greens in. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So that's, that, that really, combination. Really, well, what I wanted to go to is um, I, wanted, I wanted to do the Alabama look. You know, our, our greens and our whites, I'm sorry, our blacks and our whites are the Alabama uniform, just in different colors. But I would like to, to kind of mimic this. I just have a lot of respect for that program and how it's run. And I just, very simple, it's because you know, if you ever watch us play, we don't have sleeves. We don't have one sock up, one sock down. Nope. We don't have wristbands all over our legs. I mean, and, and that's one thing about being a teammate is that you don't have to – if you want people to look at you and think you're a, a good football player, be a good football player. Right. Just because you have a sleeve does not make you a good football player. Nope. And just because you have one sock up, one sock down does make you a good football player. If you want people to look at you and say, wow, he's a good football player, be a good football player. Bottom There's line. A lot, of, a lot of eyes going to be on this team this year. Not only one of the toughest schedules in the state, defending state champions, ESPN Thursday, September 15th, two of the top players in the country, and just endless possibilities with this talent pool this season. Can't wait for you to join us. You can join us live at Powell Davis Stadium. If you haven't gotten your season tickets, you can get them at Boone, 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 PA, right here uh, just over the island, 1001 Avenida, Avenida Del Circo in Venice. You can get your season tickets all pretty much – at any point, or are they cutting the cutting the time off? Or? Well, no, I think I think um, they'll even they'll even sell them past the first game of the season at a at a different price. But if they're available, you know, once they're, the, once they're, they're bought, by. yeah, I mean, once they're bought and the seats are taken, <laughs> they're taken. And it's funny, it's funny when you when you're down on the field looking at the stands during pregame, you see the left side and the right side. It's all filled. Yep. And then the middle is empty because they're not rushing. Nope, they know they got their yeah, seat. They got their seat. A they nice got, seat. Yeah, and they can show up and get their seat before kickoff. And a lot of great improvements coming to the Powell Davis Stadium as we've got some plans in the works to develop some so that some working up in the press box, getting some nice nice equipment. We've got a lot of new things coming with Vibrant Aspect Media. Um, my students are going to be working a lot of the things. We're going to have different angles, a lot more cameras on, on, on the broadcast this year. Again, we talked about in the coaches show, you will not find a better high school football broadcast than we do here and have here at Vibrant Aspect Media. Friday night against IMG, you'll be able to watch the game for free through our BoxCast link and potentially on our YouTube channel with Vibrant Aspect Media. Waiting for the information on that. But either way, you can go to VeniceIndianFootball.org, watch Friday night's game for free, and then buy a pass for the season. You catch every single game, every down, every snap on the road to the 2022 state championship, which is also going to be held, as we talked about earlier, back at DRV Pink Stadium in Fort Lauderdale. Hey, if you're a parent or if you're a player, like I'd, I'm definitely purchasing that because you can continue to watch it the rest forever. Yep. And uh, The Peevely's dad. Mr. Peevely, look, Michael Peevely, bought the whole season last year, was able to keep highlights of, of Michael's game. The, and I don't think people realize how good the broadcast is. I think if they if they realized how good it was, it's it, it's not a whole you're not a whole far not long way off of watching ESPN. No, not at all. You could take my commentary and John's commentary out of it, and both Josh and Francis and the rest of the crew do just as good of a job at ESPN. You could throw anybody in there, and they would make the game look good. So, uh, another cool addition we're going to have each and every week. Well, s before we get to that, we may have some guest 
color analysts in the booth this year. I'm hearing Trey Burton maybe coming to join us. Trey did a great job in the one appearance he made last year, but we want Trey to, Trey to keep coming. As, as a Patriots fan, I told Trey, and I, I felt weird saying this, I said, I'm not supposed to like you, but he's such a likable guy. And I tell you what, man, Trey, Trey could be a color analyst uh, in college or, or, or professional football. He's that good. He knows his stuff. He tells you everything you need to know alongside the best color man in the minutes and John Massoni. Um, so, uh, spo- go ahead. Sorry. I was this is your show. You, oh, no, no. You're going to the sponsor spotlight? We're going to go oh, to the sponsor go. spotlight. Yeah, I was reminded. So, sponsor spotlight of the week. We've got a lot of great sponsors here. I've got the list. Pardon me. I'll check my, uh, check my list. Thankful for all those who are able to bring us the action each and every week. Jenkins Chevrolet, State College of Florida, here at Bogies, Venice Pest Control, Sarasota Ford, Absolute Aluminum, Chick-fil-A, Pelican Plaza, E.T. McKenzie, Douglas Cheap, and Lightning Fast Car Wash. Each and every week we're going to spotlight a different sponsor who really is able to not only bring you the broadcast but really does a lot to support the Venice Indian football program. Yeah, we we have really do have some uh, great people and great, great businesses that really help us out and um, – Without them, like, there's so much, uh, uh, so much uh, less of experience that our kids would have without their support. There's a lot of other programs in, in areas that don't get that community support. And luckily, the Venice community really surrounds not only the football program, but their athletes. I'm about to head to the volleyball match here in just a couple of minutes. Who They really take the time to invest in their program and their product because they know what they're investing in. They're investing in the future and giving kids opportunities they might not have gotten otherwise. Exactly. So... Uh, we're going to head to the volleyball match. Thanks for joining us here. I, do you want to take off? No, we're good. We're, we're good. good? Yeah. Thanks for joining us here on the Episode 1, Season 4 of the Masoni and Peacock Podcast. John, not, while not as good looking, we'll be back in the seat next That's week right. with <laughs> Coach John Peacock. I'm Josh Grant. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on Friday night. Pre-game show starts at 7, only brought to you by VSN and Vibrant Aspect Media. We'll see you Friday.